Brothers and sisters, after praising Allah and saying the peace and salams upon the Prophet Muhammad, we thank you for coming to the first talk uh, from the series of talks, inshallah, that we'll be doing for the next four days, entitled The Path That Leads to Jannah. And all of us would agree that this topic is an important topic, no doubt, because it's our ultimate goal, our home, the thing that we keep our eyes on and reflection for the things that we do every day as Muslims, trying to give ourselves a better home here and a better home in the next life. And so we hope and we pray and we ask Allah Azzawajal that He make this gathering a gathering that is beneficial, filled with blessing. And hopefully it will be one of those opportunities that not only that we get closer to Allah Azzawajal, but we also get closer to each other as brothers and sisters. And we strengthen our brotherhood, inshallah, because knowledge is the foundation. And we have with us tonight Abu Muhammad al Madhuri. And he came to us from Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, he's the assistant, uh, the assistant Imam uh, at the, uh, the Masjid al Tawheed in Stone Mountain, Georgia. And we thank him for coming and making the effort to be here. Uh, and we hope that uh, he will be with us uh, for a while. Um, he has been making da'wah and involved in da'wah for quite some time now, over a decade now. And we're pleased to have him with us. Uh, so without further ado, uh, we start. Uh, <laughs> من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سليلا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن خير الكلام وأحسن الكلام كلام الله جل وعلا وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار ثم أما بعد فإني أشكر الله سبحانه وتعالى على ما من به علينا من هذا اللقاء الطيب مع إخوة لنا في الله فأسأل الله سبحانه وتعالى أن يجعل جمعنا هذا جمعا نافعا لنا للمتكلم وللسامعين وأسأل الله سبحانه وتعالى أن يجعلنا ممن إذا سمعوا النصائح والذكر اهتموا أحسنه First of all, I thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for conferring upon us the like of this ni'mah and this favor by gathering with our brothers here. Likewise, the sisters, they are together listening, insha'Allah ta'ala. Indeed, this is a ni'mah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to gather in one of the houses of Allah to study the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make these gatherings 
beneficial for all of us, for the speaker and for those who are listening. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from those who when they listen to this speech they follow the best of it. نعم الله علينا كثيرا أهمها أن هدانا الله سبحانه وتعالى الإسلام والاتباع سنة خير الأنا محمد بن عبد الله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم Indeed, as you all know, the favors of Allah are many upon us Many are the favors of Allah endless bounties we enjoy from the fresh air we breathe to the fresh water we drink the varieties of food fruits and vegetables sound intellect vision hearing children peace tranquility serenity joy and the like Yet the greatest of all of these favors is the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has guided us, us to our Islam, to be Muslims, and to follow the sunnah of our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Has it not been for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His mercy upon us, we won't be guided. Because guidance, al-hidayah, ni'mah, wa minna, wa hadiyah, min Allah. سبحانه وتعالى يتفضل بها على من يشاء من عباده. Because guidance to be rightly guided toward Islam and to be Muslim, to practice Islam, is a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That He gives it to whom He will and chooses from His servants. He has nothing to do with who you are, what country you come from how much you have achieved in this life. There are people that used to be from the family of the Prophet Muhammad and they died upon shirk. Yes, reality. His uncle, two uncles. Many people that they know him, they heard him, they've seen him, they know his manners. They called him for years, the truthful. But they died upon shirk. They, did, they didn't accept Islam. But yet, there are people who come way after the Prophet's death. Not just tens of years, but hundreds of years. And they accepted Islam. They never seen the Prophet They never heard his speeches. Or met him in the streets. Or sat with him and observe his manners and his behavior, his kindness, his generosity, his mercy, his forbearance. Yet Allah opened their hearts to Al-Islam. Some people don't even speak Arabic yet, trying to learn it. Allah guided them to Al-Islam. This is a ni'mah, azimah. This is a great ni'mah, we have to be happy. This is. This is any, like any other favor or something good that may happen to you in your life. To be a Muslim, that's all you need. Now, then you, you go to work and try to do this and do that. But then this is it. We should be happy. Because we have that which, if we die upon, we be in the Jannah, inshallah. May Allah make us from the inhabitants of the Jannah, me. As you heard that the, uh, the title of this gathering, inshallah, this talks about the path that lead to the Jannah. Al-Jannah haqq. The Jannah is true. Makhluqa khalaqaha Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa a'addaha wa ma fiha lil muhsineen, lil muttaqeen, lil muti'een, lil tawabeen, lil awabeen, lil munibeen. The Jannah is true, created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for, and He has actually prepared in it and put in it all the beautiful things that Allah tells us in the Quran or 
in the Sunnah of our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu All this are prepared for the obedient servants of Allah, al murtaqun the good doors al muhsinun اليوم إن شاء الله سنتكلم عن أمر مهم عن الإسلام لأن من غير الإسلام هو هذا هو طريق الجنة الإسلام هو طريق إلى الجنة إسلام is the path that leads to the Jannah no other things no Christianity no Judaism because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Inna dina inna Allah is Islam. The religion with Allah is Islam. And also in another verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَن يَبْتَغِ غَيْرَ الْإِسْلَامِ دِينًا فَلَنْ يُقْبَلَ مِنْهُ Whoever chooses any religion other than Islam to be upon, will never be accepted from such a person, whether it be he or she. And on the hereafter, such person will be amongst the losers. And then a person will apply Islam. And, and therefore you will find that there is so many things that lead to the Jannah, alhamdulillah. When you look at the ayahs that talks about the Jannah in the Quran, you, Allah, mentioned many actions that the people of the Jannah, they perform. Many ayahs, like, for example, the beginning of Surah Al-Mu'minun, قَدْ أَفْلَحَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ لَذِينَ هُمْ فِي صَلَاتِهِمْ خَاشِعُونَ وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ عَنِ اللَّهُ الْمُعْرِ إِلَىٰ أَخِرِ الْآيَاتِ Allah says, successful are indeed the believers. And Allah starts mention some of their qualities, some of their actions that they act upon. We're going to mention these in details in tomorrow talks and, and the upcoming talks, insha'Allah ta'ala. But what I want to do today is a foundation, is a qaida, is a principle. We're going to talk about Islam. أن نكون مسلمين انتسابا It's not enough and sufficient for us to just be Muslims by affiliation بعد المسلمين هو مسلم لأنه ولد في بلد إسلامي وله اسم مسلم لكن ما يفقه في دين الله شيء ما تعلم ولا شيء لا يعرف شيئا عن دينه ولا عن ربه ولا عن نبيه صلى الله عليه وسلم لا يعرف الفرق بين الحلال والحرام الحمد لله أنه ولد في بلد الإسلام لكن عليه أن يستغل هذه الفرصة العظيمة ويتعلم دينه It's not enough شيخ صالح الفوزان حفظه الله تعالى said It's not enough for a person to be a good Muslim just by affiliation just because that person he or she were born in a Muslim country and have a Muslim name or just because they were born into a Muslim family, Muslim parents, or just because Allah guided them to an Islam by, by entering into Islam, by saying, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah Sallallahu but they never wants to learn anything. Rather, a person should learn about Islam, learn about Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala, learn about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. As Shaykh Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab Rahimahullah Ta'ala mentioned in his very important book, ثلاثة أصول the three fundamental principles إعلم رحمك الله أنه يجب علينا تعلم أربع مسائل الأولى العلم وهو معرفة الله ومعرفة نبيه ومعرفة دين الإسلام بالأدلة this great shaykh he says you should know that is incumbent upon all of us to learn and have knowledge of four matters four matters the first one is knowledge. We have to acquire knowledge of Allah. This is how we're going to learn the deen. How are we going to know what Allah likes and what Allah hates? How are we going to know the path that leads to the Jannah from the path that leads to the hellfire? 
through knowledge. He said knowledge, and what is most important to learn and to start with, he said knowledge of Allah, and knowledge of his Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and knowledge of Islam. All of this with proofs. Then they had a team deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The religion is Allah's religion. Sanaqra'u lakum insha'Allah ta'ala min ithaf al-qari bi ta'liqat ala sharh al-sunnah bi imam al-barbahar. We're just going to go briefly quote and select some quotes from the explanation of the creed from Imam al-Barbahari, explanation and comments by one of our great scholars of this time, Dr. Salih al-Fawzan, Allah. First of all, Imam al-Barbahari, rahimahullah ta'ala, is one of the great scholars of Islam, the first scholars of Islam, because he died in the year 329 of the Hijrah. We are on the 1433 of the Hijrah. This Shaykh and this scholar died in the year 329. So he was closer to the, to the era of the Prophet Sallallahu and the era of the companions. In his time, was a lot of scholars, was a lot of knowledge. And the closer you find a Shaykh and a Alim to the companions of the Tabi'i, the better you find his knowledge, sound, because he's close, he's fresh. Because he just learned it from two or three Mashaykh, that they have learned it from Atba'i Tabi'in, they have learned from Tabi'in who they took from the Sahaba, who themselves learned this deen from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. يعلموا أن الإسلام هو السنة والسنة هي الإسلام ولا يقوم أحدهما إلا بالآخر You should know that Islam is the Sunnah and Sunnah is Islam None of these two meaning Islam or Sunnah can be established without the other In the explanation قال الشيخ صلى الله عليه وسلم اعلم هذه كلمة للاهتمام he says the ulama of Ahl Sunnah wa Jama'ah, when they start their books by saying, I'lam, you should know. To draw your attention that what, what follows is very important. Whatever coming that they are about to talk about is very important. Lakin ma ma'na i'lam? Ma'naha ta'allam. Limada? كيف تعلم أن الإسلام هو السنة إذا تعلمت وقال اعلم اعلموا يعني تعلموا ما يمكن أن تعلم من غير تعلم so he says here this noble sheikh said you should know that Islam is the سنة and the سنة is Islam what does it mean you should know it means you should learn because how would you know something if you don't learn it? If you don't learn about something, you, you stay ignorant of it. He said, yes, he's saying to us, you should know, but actually what he, what he intend by that, you should learn about Islam. And you should learn that Islam is the Sunnah, and Sunnah is Islam. Because how you want to know Islam is the Sunnah? How? If you learn that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, He used this. فَعْلَمْ In the Qur'an, for example, in Surah Muhammad. In Surah Muhammad, in the verse 19, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَعْلَمْ أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَى اللَّهُ وَاسْتَغْفِرْ لِذَنْبِكَ فَعْلَمْ You should learn so that you can have knowledge that none has the right to be worshipped except Allah. You should learn this. It's a very important matter. You should learn that none has the right to be worshipped except Allah. So you will have knowledge based on certainty that none has the right to be worshipped except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And ask forgiveness for yourself, for your sins. يعني اعلم معنى لا إله الله وعمل به What he means here, the Shaykh Salih al-Fawzan says, 
you should learn the meaning of La ilaha illallah. What does it mean? And act upon it. Once you learn, you act upon it. Likewise, another verse, verse 98 in Surah Al-Ma'idah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, اِعْلَمُوا أَنَّ اللَّهَ شَدِيدُ الْعِقَابُ وَأَنَّ اللَّهَ غَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ You should know, and once again, how would you know? Through learning, through knowledge. You should know that Allah is severe in punishment, but also Allah is Rafur, the all forgiven, the all merciful. So the Shaykh said that this fi'l, i'lam, i'lamu, comes to draw our attention to that which comes after it. That is very important. Likewise, the ulama, they mention a similar thing is, Ya ayyuha ladina aman. Whenever you find the ayah, Allah starts the ayah by Ya ayyuha ladina amanu satu'mar bifi'li shay'in aw bitarki ah. Whenever there is an ayah that starts by Ya ayyuha ladina amanu, now you gotta pay attention. Why? Because you're gonna be commanded to do something or you're commanded to stay away from something else. Qala al Imam al Barbahari rahmahullah. Al-Islam is the Sunnah, the Sunnah is Islam. Islam is the Sunnah, the Sunnah is Islam. يعني الإسلام هو الطريق التي جاء بها الرسل عليهم الصلاة والسلام. He says, what it means here is that Islam, that all of the messengers, all of them, all of the messengers عليهم الصلاة والسلام came with from Allah سبحانه وتعالى. كل الرسل جاءوا بالإسلام. فكل نبي دعا إلى الله سبحانه وتعالى دعا إلى التوحيد أن يوحد الله وأن يعبد الله وحده وأن لا يشرك به شيء لا ملك مقرب ولا نبي مرسل ولا ولي صالح ولا شجر ولا صنم ولا حجر لا أحد يشرك مع الله سبحانه وتعالى في عبادته The Sheikh says all the messengers عليهم الصلاة والسلام they brought Islam. They came with Islam from Allah SWT. Every single prophet and messenger called to Allah SWT. Called the people to worship Allah alone. Through Islamic monotheism. Because Allah alone deserves to be worshipped. No one else shares this with Allah SWT. All actions of worship should be performed for Allah, sincerely for Allah. We don't worship close angels, prophets, messengers, some righteous man, as certain people do. People worship trees, stones, some worship the sun, some the moon, and the like. But the believer, he worships Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فالإسلام عبادة الله عز وجل وحده في كل وقت بما شرع. So Islam is to worship Allah alone based on what Allah has legislated in each time. Allah has sent legislation to every prophet and messenger. The prophets and the messengers they have received revelation. They call the people to Allah based on legislation from Allah. The prophets and the messengers never came from anything from themselves. They follow. They follow what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala legislated for them. وَقَدْ شَرَعَ اللَّهُ لِلْأَنْبِيَاءِ شَرَعَ إِلَىٰ أَجَالِ ثُمَّ يَنْسَخُهَا And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala send message and reveal message, messages to the prophets. And then those messages, they will be abrogated when Allah send another message to another prophet or a messenger. إِلَىٰ أَنْ جَاءَ مُحَمَّدْ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمْ فَنَسَخَتْ شَرِيعَتُهُ كُلَّ الْدِيَانَاتِ السَّابِقَةِ 
And he was, this was the case until Allah sent our beloved Prophet Muhammad وسلم, He revealed to him a book, a Quran Al-Azim, and he commanded everybody from that moment to follow the Prophet Muhammad وسلم. No one has the right to follow anything else. Everybody from that moment is obliged to follow the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he has revealed to our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. لا يقوم الإسلام إلا بالسنة ولا تقوم السنة إلا بالإسلام ما كيف نفهم هذا؟ When the Sheikh he says, Imam al Barbahari says, Islam cannot be established. The correct meaning of Islam cannot be established without the Sunnah. And the Sunnah cannot be established without Islam. How do we understand this? قال فالذي يدعي الإسلام ولا يعمل بالسنة أي ما كان عليه الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم هذا ليس بمسلم. He says, the one who claimed to be upon Islam and act upon Islam, but he doesn't follow the Sunnah of the Prophet Does not. The Sunnah came to the person, he's like, no, I don't need it. Oh, no. Hadith? No, no Hadith. No Hadith. Quran, I said, I'm a Muslim. No Hadith. Is this a Muslim? He cannot worship Allah SWT without following the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Likewise, الَّذِي يَعْلَمُ السُنَّةِ وَلَا يُسْلِمْ لِلَّهِ لَيْسَ بِمُسْلِمْ وَإِنْ عَرَفَ السُنَّةِ فَلَا بُدَّ مِنَ جَرْوِينَ هُمَا Likewise, someone he knows the sunnah, oh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did this, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said this, we should do it according to the sunnah, but that person didn't submit his heart to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even though he knows a lot about the sunnah, still, it's not beneficial. So a person has to combine between the two. Submit willingly to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by accepting that Allah is the Lord of mankind and He's the only true God that deserves to be worshipped and stay away from shirk. Because if a person worships Allah and worship others beside Him, that's a shirk. وَالشِّرْكُ يُحْبِطُ amal. Shirk nullifies the deeds. قال الله تعالى إن الله لا يغفر أن يشرك به ويغفر ما دون ذلك لمن يشاء. الله does not forgive that partners to be ascribed with him and set with him as rivals in worship, but he forgive anything else to whom he will. هناك أمثلة كثيرة في العالم الإسلامي في بعض من البلدان الإسلامية أو الله لنا ولهم التوفيق. والهداية والتبات على الإسلام والسنة نعم there are examples some Muslims in some Muslim countries may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all tawfiq so that we can be firm upon the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala هذه حقيقة ليست من الأوهام it's a reality there are people they pray for Allah if you don't pray for a tree or for for Allah, they fast for Allah, they make hajj for Allah, but then they slaughter for the jinn. See, and he pray for Allah. He didn't pray for a tree. And if you go to that person and say, "Did you pray to the tree?" He say, "It's a stuff for Allah." Oh, the billah, Why you say such things? Stuff for Allah. I pray for Allah. But then he's going to slaughter for the jinn. Certain people, they do that before they move to another house. Or they buy another, a house. Which is, alhamdulillah, it's okay. If somebody has the means to buy a house. Mean that it's halal, no riba, no interest, no mortgage. MashaAllah. You can buy even hundreds, so what? <laughs> Islam doesn't say don't buy no houses. You just have to know how you buy them. The means that are pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But some people, they pray and they fast Ramadan. And they say, Allah, 
La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa But then before they move into the house, they slaughter an animal. Okay? He has some people helping. You know, they go to the old house and they load. It takes like six, seven hours. They load the truck, the u whole truck or that truck. Okay, so this girl, they drive to the new place, new house. And right, those people who are helping, they're about to put stuff in. He's like, wait a minute. We're going to slaughter. And he brings the goats. Those brothers help and they said, hey, you don't have to slaughter for us, man. A couple of pizzas will be, will be enough for us. Then like, this man is generous. So how we're helping him. He's slaughtering a goat for us. He's like, no, that's not for you guys. That's for the jinn. And that shirk akbar. That's a major shirk. Likewise, if I some, 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 these are people who they say, La ilaha illallah, pray, and they go to graves. And those graves, they may be the graves of some righteous person. Now, that person in that grave, who's a alim, mashallah, who's a righteous person, alhamdulillah. Just because he was a righteous person, you go to him and say, give me children, cure my mother from cancer, give me this. No. Because why? Because that dua and slaughtering animals is ibadah. Just as fasting is an ibadah, just as praying is an act of worship, just as performing hajj is an act of worship, dua is an act of worship. The Prophet says, dua is worship. So all acts of the worship has to be performed for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. قال الإمام البربهاري رحمه الله ومن السنة لزوم الجماعة. One of the signs that a person adheres to the Sunnah and applies the Sunnah, you will find that person cares about the Jama'ah, his group, the Muslims. He wants to be with them. Now, it's it's easy for a person to say I'm upon the Sunnah. But the actions, all of us, we can say, if you ask any of you, you ask me, say, are you upon the sunnah? You think I'm going to say, no, I'm not upon the sunnah? I will never. May Allah protect me. We're not going to say, I'm not upon the sunnah. Yeah, I'm going to tell you, alhamdulillah, Allah akbar, I'm upon the sunnah. But my actions and my statements, my decisions, my approaches that I take will prove to whether I am truthful in that claim or not. Here is one of the indications. Min as luzum al From the things that indicate that a person is a person of sunnah, meaning the sunnah is upon the way of the Prophet ﷺ, following that which the Prophet ﷺ and his companions they were upon, you will find that person give a lot of importance to the jama'ah, to the unity of the Muslims. To the body of the Muslims. Women here, Jama'a, Jama'a to the Muslims, Aladina al Haq, Hadahu al Jama'a. Who is this unity? This body of the Muslims is the Muslims who are they gathered upon the Haq, they gather upon the truth. Amma al Jama'a, let me say it al Haq, for he let us say al Jama'a al Haqiqiyya. As for gatherings, communities, they are not upon the truth. They are not built upon the book of Allah, following the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu They are not considered the true Jama'ah, the true body of the Muslims. كل جماعة اجتمعت على ضلالة أو على منهج مخالف للإسلام. أو على طريقة مخالفة للإسلام فلا تسمى الجماعة الحقيقية المطلوبة الممدوحة. So every group of Muslims who when they gather together they establish a community 
or a masjid, or anything like that. But they gather upon misguidance. They have laws that go against the laws of Islam. The way they do things, and the way they interact with one another, it's not in accordance to the teachings of Islam. These people, even though they may have a huge number, big number, they still not consider the jama'ah of the Muslim, the true jama'ah that is praiseworthy in the Quran and the Sunnah. Al-jama'ah al-mamduha hum ahlul haq. وَلَيْسَ مِنْ لَازِمْ ذَلِكَ أَنْ يَكُونُ كَثِيرٍ بَلْ لَوْ كَانَ وَاحِدًا عَلَى الْحَقِّ فَإِنَّهُ يُسَمَّ الْجَمَاعِ So, the true jama'ah are those who hold firm to the haqq. And that's what leads to the jannah. Because when you're around the brothers and the sisters, they are around sisters in any community or any country and even in your family. If you're around people who follow the haqq, adhere to the truth, which is the book of Allah, the sound sunnah of the Messenger of Allah وسلم, with the understanding of the companions, that will make it easy for you to stay on the path. Because whenever you, if you have the slightest doubt, you will find everybody telling you, oh no, it's like this, let's go. If you're lost, you find many people pulling you back to the path. Can we give an example? You're a carpool, like you're driving, you're going somewhere nice, another state, there is a nice opportunity for you and your family over there. Beautiful conditions of living, amazing. You get in your car and there is hundreds of other cars, but none of them have no clue where they go. You think you're going to make it? Just driving for many hours, people think, oh, we're driving, we, we get in there. You may be getting further away from it, from the target. But can you imagine if you don't know, for example, but you're surrounded by 50, 100 cars, every one of those cars know exactly how to get there. You feel comfortable. Because you're going to say, hey, if I lost this guy, because sometimes you, you'll be following somebody, the red light comes in, right? Before the red light, what comes? The yellow, right? The orange one. And some people, they forget that somebody is behind them and they pass through the orange which they're supposed to stop. But the other person, he's not going to run the light, right or wrong. So he stays, the other one keeps going, make three turns, lost him. If that's the only one he follows, he's done. But if he has so many people, if he lose this one, yes, there is ten still with him, alhamdulillah, that he can follow. Likewise, being, look at the importance of the jama'ah that they are following the haqq. Because remember, this deen is the deen of Allah. If we want to practice the correct Islam, we have to learn it from its proper sources. What are the proper sources of the deen of Allah? Who can tell me? What is the proper sources? Ahsan, barakallahu feek. Kitab Allah wa sunnah al Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Hada huwa al-deen, hadi ya masadir, taraqi. These are the sources of this deen. Can somebody say, no, I follow the Qur'an, no sunnah, and be upon the haqq? No. Can somebody say there is no need for Qur'an, just Sunnah and being the Pandaha? No. Can somebody say, no Qur'an, no, I'm, I'm, I'm born in Mecca. No Qur'an, no Sunnah, I'm from Mecca, I see the Kaaba every day. There is no need for Qur'an and Sunnah for me. I'm right here in front of the Kaaba. Is that person going to be on the Haqq? No. So it's very important for us to remember this reality. <clears throat> And it doesn't matter those people who are holding to the book of Allah, to the sound sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and that's them with the correct understanding, not with the different understanding and different interpretation, but with the understanding of the Salaf of Salih, the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the first place. 
And whoever followed them upon that good. These are the people who are the true jama'ah that is praiseworthy in the Quran and the Sunnah. Even there may be few people. Even there may be few. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi by himself. And then few people here and there. But then they get stronger, alhamdulillah, by holding firm to the deen of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. هذه الجماعة وما هو الأساس الذي تبنى عليه الجماعة؟ Another very important question. What is the foundation that this جماعة we're talking about, which is those who are upon the حق, the truth, the Quran and the Sunnah, because that's the only thing that leads to the جماعة. The path of the جماعة is clear. No one can buy a spot in the Jannah because he's rich. Can. You just can't. Because this is not what Allah says. You can buy a piece of property in this dunya, yes. You can buy the whole city if you have the means. But no one can buy a spot in the Jannah because he's rich. Now there is another way to get there. And this is the way. To hold on to the haqq and to be with the jama'ah, to follow the jama'ah, the body of the Muslim that they are upon the truth, the Qur'an and the Sunnah. What is the foundation of this jama'ah? Qala al-Imam al-Barbahari rahimahullah, wal-asas al-ladhi tubna alihi al-jama'ah hum ashabu Muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, wa rahimahum allahu ajma'in, wa hum ahlu al-sunnati wal-jama'ah. He says this, the foundation that the jama'ah is built upon are the companions of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That's the foundation. And those who come after them from al-tabi'een and atba' al-tabi'een al-qurun al-mufaddala those best generation that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has praised when he says, خَيْرُ النَّاسِ قَرْنِي ثُمَّ الَّذِينَ يَلُونَهُمْ ثُمَّ الَّذِينَ يَلُونَهُمْ The Prophet ﷺ praised the companions and praised those who come after them and those who come after them by saying the best of the people is my generation, the companions. And those who come after them, التابعون. And those who come after them, أتباع التابعون. These are the best generations. And if we want to be upon the correct Islam, we have to follow the best, man. If you want to learn any trade, who you usually go? You ask for the best. Who's the best guy here? Who's the best electrician? Who's the best engineer? Who's the best teacher? Who's the best mechanic? Who's the best driver? Who's the best this and the best this? You want to learn from the best. We want to learn Islam correctly so that we can be on the path that leads to the Jannah with certainty, with no ambiguities, with no doubts. We have to learn it from the best. The companions of the Prophet ﷺ. And whatever comes to us from them, we accept it. We act upon it. Anything that comes from other than them, then we will see if it agrees with that which Allah revealed to us meaning to this Ummah, through the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When we say Allah revealed to us, because this Qur'an is revealed to the people, so they can act upon it. But through the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he is the only one that received the revelation. But it is for all of us. It is for all of us to act upon it and to follow it. So if anyone brings us anything and says, this is from the deen, this is going to get us to the Jannah, this is going to save us from the hellfire, this is going to earn us the pleasure of Allah. This is going to make us better. This is going to get us closer to Allah. We'll say, where is it, Ya Akhi? If it's true, you got to read in the Quran and the Sunnah, or one of them, and that the Sahaba beat us to authority. They act upon it. لو كان خيرا لا سبقون إليه. 
فهؤلاء الذين يجب أن يكون المسلم معهم ويقتدي بهم الصحابة ولو ناله ما ناله من الأذى ومن التهديد ومن التعيير يصبر ويتحمل فهم صبروا وتحملوا لأن هذا هو الحق لأن الشيخ صالح الفوزاني says he wants to stay on the path that leads to the Jannah to Jannah al Firdaus not in a level will stick to the path of the Sahaba the path of the companions Ridwanullah alayhim be firm upon it but you have to know what it is by learning it by investing from our times to learn what the Sahaba were upon in the aqaid, in belief and creed in ibadat, actions of worship in 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 mu'amalat uh, the transactions in manners and behavior in the manhaj, the methodology and we act upon it we emulate the example they will be the example for us because then the example was the Prophet when we follow the companions we follow the Prophet Remember, we're talking about the Jama'ah because the Sahaba, they were one body. There was no division in the time of the Sahaba. A thousand of the Sahaba by themselves, three thousand here, they own something else, five thousand over there on something else, two hundred split from them after Ramadan. Nah. None of this happened in the time of the Prophet In the time of the Prophet the Sahaba, they were one body, they were together, they were strong. They were united upon the Haq, not upon the Qawmiyyah, the Arabs together, the Yemenis together, the Pakistanis together, Ahl al-Sham together, no. the Africans together, no. upon the Haq, doesn't matter. You will find from the companions, Arabs and non-Arabs. Salman al is not an Arab. There are people who used to be Christians and become Muslims. Those who was Jew become Muslim. People from Habasha, but they are all together on the heart of one man. Why? Because Allah united their hearts since they follow the Haq, the truth, the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet So the Shaykh says, you will follow the way of the companions. And keep in mind, Allah is going to test you. You're going to go through some hardship. People are going to make fun of you because you're trying to hold down to the deen of Allah. People are going to tell you, man, you come here with something new. What, what is this? Because they don't know what it is. من جهل شيئاً عاداه Whoever is ignorant of something will take it as an enemy. Because this is something new. So it's very important, the Sheikh says, but you be patient. As the companions, they were patient. Subhanallah, some of us, subhanallah, Allah Musta'an, we have no patience. We want to be on the path of the Jannah, but when Allah tests us with the little bit of hardship, some of us give up easy. It's like someone, they told him, listen, in Alabama from here, drive to Alabama, or let's say to Louisiana, or let's say to California, make it a little bit longer, okay? They said, there is a good opportunity. Somebody who's struggling in here, okay, he's barely paying the rent. He's a good working person. He's taking good care of his family. But they told him, listen, in California, man, what are you doing here? And by the way, I'm just giving an example, okay? Don't you think this is not real? And I don't want anybody to start packing tonight and moving to California. This is an example. All right, brothers and sisters, this is an example. All right? Inshallah, it may be real. That's up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let's say somebody came and said, you, you, what are you doing here in Florida? You're struggling like that? Yeah, people making a thousand dollars an hour. Doing something easy, easy, nothing. Sitting on a, on a chair in the office, drinking their coffee and making a thousand dollars an hour. Now what people would do now? Huh? Oh sure, they're going to pack and head what? West. Now these people, what's going to keep them going? 
Does it make a difference they go 65 miles an hour or get stuck in the traffic? They get stuck in traffic. Are they going to come back to Florida? No, they're not going to come back. They're motivated. They're like, listen, man, we, we stuck, we're not stuck. It's, we, it's all going to be easy. We're going to forget about everything once we get to California. Likewise, Yahweh. As long as we stay on the path that leads to the Jannah, the path that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala legislates for us, it will be take this with no doubt about it. There is no easiest way to the Jannah other than what Allah has already chosen for us. He's the merciful. So we say, listen man, I'm going to have to be on this path. There is no other path. There is no alternatives. There is no shortcuts when you come to this one. There is only one path, the path of Allah. I'm going to stay on it. I'm going to make sure my beloved people to me, my wife, my children, my mother, my father, my brothers, my sisters, my neighbors, my friends, whom I love, the brothers that I see and I pray with them, Fajr, Dhuhr, Asr, Maghrib, Isha, Jumu'ah, Eid, prayer, I fast to them, break the fast with them. I smile in their faces, shake their hands, give them hugs when they come from, from a journey and the like. Those brothers that I witness their marriages, eat in their walimas, congratulate them when they have newborn, beautiful boy or girl. I want good for them. So you don't just get in a car and keep going. No, you want your family to make a thousand dollars an hour too. If you are ten of you, and all of you cashing that money, it's better than only one, right or wrong? Likewise, we love for others what we love for ourselves. Not just me. If I get up for 200, I'm going to make sure my wife get up too, so she can get that benefit. If, if it crossed my mind, listen, I got to fast Monday and Thursday. I have to encourage my wife and my children, my friends, my brothers, my sisters in Islam. If you're an imam, you give a khutbah on it, class on it. If you're not an imam, you send the text messages, a hadith, ayat on the virtue of doing this and this, as we're going to talk about this, inshallah, in details from tomorrow. Because if everybody is doing good in the community, subhanAllah, that reflects in beautiful results on the entire community. But if one person is doing good and everybody is struggling, man, the load gets heavy. It's heavy. But if you have, you want to pick up a big load by yourself, you can't. If you have 50 people, it's a piece of cake. The job gets done in the easiest way. And you be patient, no matter what happened to you in that path. Why? You're motivated. Because once you die and you make it to the Jannah, it's all history. Because in the Jannah, there is no fatigue. There is no crimes, there is no worries, there is none of that. No illnesses, no sicknesses, no worries. You're not going to worry to lose your property, or lose your car, or lose your health, or lose this or that. You enjoy it. An everlasting entertainment from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But we have to do one thing. Find the path. Don't just grab to anyone. Now you're going to find which one. You gotta know the path that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose for us. We follow it. We stay on it. Try to, to, to know the thing that may bump us and kick us out of it so we can avoid them when we see them. Like when you're driving, man. You see a, a bump, you don't go to it, you go around it. When there is a sign telling you curve to the right, you don't say, I don't care, I don't know what these people are talking about, I'm gonna go straight. You get, you get harmed. Likewise, Allah tells us in the Quran, go straight. Some of us be making exits to the right and to the left. The Sunnah tells us stop. Some people are not paying attention. They keep going and then they run to something. They run to something. And that's what we've been doing, some of us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us tawfiq and grant us beneficial knowledge and righteous actions. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ikhlas, sincerity, in everything we say and everything we do. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us 
and keep us firm on the path that leads to the Jannah, the path that Allah SWT has chosen for us. May Allah preserve our families and our children and our wives. May Allah have mercy on the souls of the Muslims, our parents, and our Muslim brothers and sisters who died by Islam. May Allah cure the six amongst us. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help the needy and those who go going through difficulties. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala assist and aid the oppressed ones among the Muslims, whenever they may be. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect them from the tyrants and the oppressors. I mean, subhanahu wa bihamdika, shadu Allah ilaha ilaha anta, astaghfirullahu wa alayk, wa sallallahu wa sallam ala muhammadin, wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam, wa taslima al-kathira.